Hi, I've done a video quite a long time ago uh, called Solar Power Hope, where I looked at uh, solar cells and did some measurements because I was looking at developing a solar powered uh, calculator. But as it turns out, these pissant little uh, solar cells, even the best ones on the market, most efficient ones on the market, could not uh, you know, generate the required current that I needed for the dot matrix display and things. And I just uh, got Curious, I did measurements on the solar cell itself, but I never did any measurements on these solar powered calculators and how much current they actually draw. So I thought that might be interesting. So I thought we'd take a representative example, a fairly uh, recent one in uh, uh, terms of uh, these types of uh, Casios. It's the pre VPAM rubbish, of course. It's the FX260 solar. It goes under other uh, uh, part numbers as well, I believe, in different countries, but uh, this one is fairly recent. I don't know, it's probably uh, five or six years old. They might even still sell it in uh, places. And I thought we'd just crack this thing open and uh, have a look at it because the solar, it's obviously got a big cap in it. Check it out, see? If I cover that solar cell up, there's obviously a big electrolytic cap in there or something holding on the charge there for quite some time and even when the display blanks like that it still it still keeps it it's still in there so I thought we'd actually crack this thing open and do some measurements and see what the actual current consumption uh, both uh, static display and also uh, during calculation if we're able to uh, probe it but I've got lots of calculators if we can't easily probe this one I'm sure we can probe another let's give it a go and here it is ta-da Look at that. We've just got a uh, chip on board, classic black blob there. They've got the epoxy coating on that. Uh, these Casios, um, many different construction techniques. I might even take another one apart later and uh, show you like a, you know, a bare die approach or something like that. And there's our solar cell. It's a Sanyo SA551154. And uh, there's not much else in there. There's the electrolytic uh, cap. Of course, that was fairly obvious that it had a large size cap in there, and all it's got is two other surface mount ceramic caps, and that's it. I mean, you know, there's no crystal, no nothing in this thing. Obviously, a built-in uh, um, RC oscillator in this thing. It would only be running at, you know, tens of kilohertz or something like that at most. This thing, of course, is not particularly fast. Let's do something, and probably the most complex thing this thing can do, Let's do 69 factorial, shall we? It's 69, because that's the upper limit of a 99 exponent. And you can, ah, no, it did it reasonably quickly. I've got slower ones than that. But yeah, anyway, it's not a particularly fast machine. Incidentally, let's see if that's any slower if we lower that voltage. So the LCD dims. It's really quite dim now. So let's do that, 69. You can just see it. And, nah, it's probably about the same amount of time, I think. So, looks like voltage has no effect on the uh, speed. It might have a slight effect, maybe, um, because of the RC oscillator in the thing, but yeah, probably not much. But anyway, um, the good thing about this one is that we can just crack straight into there and uh, power this thing from a bench supply, see, where it, see what operational voltage range it runs over, and also, measure the current and uh, we'll do that uh, we'll also take out the uh, supply cap as well because we don't want that um, interfering with our uh, pulse uh, current measurements okay this is the test setup i've got here i've got my microcurrent of course classic uh, example for the use of this i got it on the uh, microamp range so it's going to give out one millivolt per microamp so i've got the output of that going in to the new agilent u1273ax you haven't seen this uh meter before it is a newie um it's basically exactly the same as the u uh, 1273 but it's and with the oled uh this very sexy oled display on it but it's designed to go down to minus 40 degrees or something like that ah, that's its only advantage anyway go figure but the oled display is sexy you probably see some flicker there due to the uh uh frame rate of the video anyway that's measuring the uh current uh, draw of the thing. I've got it powered from a bench uh, power supply and 
the Fluke 87 here is going to measure the uh, input voltage. At the moment, I'm actually measuring the uh, solar cell voltage, so it's um, 2.62 uh, volts. There, you know, if I put my hand over it a little bit, it drops to 2.5, so it looks like, you know, two, I've got like a thousand lux here on the bench, so um, it looks like 2.6 is, you know, the maximum, You maybe you might get a bit higher than that, you know, out in direct sun when you're talking tens of thousands of lux or something, but indoor environment here, about 2.6 volts, so we know it uh, operates from, you know, 2.6 downwards, so we'll uh, start around there on our power supply and drop it until it dies. So here we go, I've got the power supply set to 2.55 volts, it's not measuring the uh, solar cell anymore, it's measuring the bench supply input, and uh, of course it's working just hunky-dory, and uh, we're getting, it's drawing about uh, three, just over three microamps, so I don't know, I kind of expected it to be a little bit less than that. This thing has an auto dimming mode, you've got to turn it on to get the real sexy bright OLED, does that to save power consumption I guess. Um, now. It's working just fine, so let's drop this sucker. Bench supply here until the uh, calculator, we're viewing it sort of almost straight on, maybe a bit above angle, but it's certainly still excellent contrast on that LCD at 1.25. It sort of starts to drop it, yeah, say about 1. Point. Oh, yeah, if you view it down on a lower angle down here, yeah, you can, oh, it's probably, it looks better on camera here, but uh, there you go. Let's drop it down a bit further. And uh, it certainly is still usable down to one volt. So, oh, yeah, mate, if you, you can't see it on the screen there, but if you raise the angle there, you can just see it. So it's barely usable at a volt. And it, you know, under that, it's just completely dead. But at a volt, um, we're getting about 1.4 microamps. And so, but let's take it back up to two, for example. So 1.4 to 2.6, there's not a huge difference in the operational current there. So let's see what happens when we press a key. Let's see the current. There we go, it does jump up. Hard to, well, I can set the uh, peak mode on this and see if we can capture the peak of this. There we go, it's beeping away at us, so let's capture. Yeah, there we go. It's peaking at like five, six. It's, yeah, let's try 69 factorial. Whoa, there we go, when it was doing that factorial, jumped up to 16.2 microamps. Oh, what a whopper. Let's try that at two and a half volts or thereabouts. 69 factorial. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's pretty much 16 and a half is where it's gonna peak. Let's uh, zero that out and let's do it again. 69 factorial. Boom. Let's see what happens when it's say doing a, uh, doing a log here. Let's do, I don't know, the log of, let's do the log of 42. There we go, 10.5, so it's not as high as the uh, factorial one there. And if we do, say, square root of 42, this is a good use for the min-max mode on your uh, multimeter. You can capture these peaks, because it is quite capable of uh, getting those peaks. Now, it does a square root really quickly, so it, there's not much... Uh, peak in there, it takes more to do the log, so we go 40, oh, 42, log, there we go, yeah, it definitely takes more current to do a log than it does a square root. And if you watch it closely, you can actually, when I press a key, you might be able to see it capture a, a, a sort of transition up there on the bar graph there, because the bar graph updates much faster than the display does, so there you go, interesting. And because the other one doesn't uh, switch off, because it's there's no battery in it, solar powered only, there's no off function, I can't measure the standby current consumption, so I thought I'd get this uh, Tandy EC4014. Um, it's a rebadged Casio, of course, I'm not sure of the Casio model number off the top of my head. And when it's on, it's drawing about 3.8 microamps, and 
when it's off, let me, rather than wait for the timeout, I'll just switch the damn thing off. And uh, so let's switch down to the microamp range. Sorry, the nanoamp range. And uh, move this up a bit. There we go. 700, just over 700 nanoamps. And if you're curious to see inside this one, it's just a quad flat pack. Very traditional construction with uh, some axial diodes there actually uh, hand soldered on. And once again, that's about it. Nothing else. And this is, of course, a uh, dual power solar battery version. So we've got our solar cell up there and also the battery connection. And I did promise you one with different construction. And I know that this one, because I took it apart when I first got it, of course, back in oh, probably 1987, I think I got this one. These are about the same vintage. I got this one a year or two possibly before that. Um, so this is, you know, about 87, possibly 88 vintage at most. And it's the uh, Tandy EC431. And I know this one has different to, even though it's the um, almost practically the same age as this one, which had the quad flat pack, this one has radically different uh, chip construction in there. So let's take a look. And there it is, check it out. I will get the macro lens out and have a good close up of that, but it is radically different to the quad flat pack we saw before. And check out this uh, flat flex on here, which has these two diodes. Can I, I'm not sure if I can peel that all the way back. Oh yeah, why not? Anyway, there we go. Look at that. They've got a flat flex in there just to mount those two diodes on. Very, very interesting. So you can see that there's no PCB in this thing. I guess they were uh, experimenting with uh, what cost savings they could get with no PCB and uh, they've gone, uh, you know, the complete flat flex route because they knew they had to mount the two uh, diodes on there. So they decided to uh, mount them, solder them directly to the flat flex, bond it on, and well, look at that. Nothing. I mean, the battery contacts down in there, it's just got your, it's just got the uh, flat flex membrane down in there under the battery for the lower battery contacts. Some of that's actually worn off by the looks of it. And check that out. That is obviously the bottom of the die there. And they've uh, flipped it over and mounted it on the other side because it's clearly the bottom because you can't see the uh, circuitry on the top of that. The actual, you know, the circuitry etched into the silicon wafer. So it is, it is very interesting. I'll see if I can lift this membrane out of here and try and have a look at the other side of that. Here we go. Let's have a look at this. Check that out. Isn't that absolutely fascinating? Little bubbles in there. They almost look like little vias or something, but they clearly aren't. That's just uh, something trapped underneath the bottom of the chip there. But you can see the individual wires sort of, you know, uh, like a uh, kind of like bonding out from the chip, but they aren't actually bond wires. They're actually impregnated into the plastic film there. So they've got a two layer construction on that. They've got this very, they've got this, uh, actually, that is, it's not, yeah, yeah, it's flexible. It's flexible. So that is a bit of more rigid type of plastic. So they've got that, which is what they mount the chip on. And they so they flip it over and it looks like they do actually solder it down to these very fine pitch. I'm not sure what that pitch is in there, but it's absolutely incredibly fine, I'm sure. And then these come out to the pads along here, which then this is bonded to so that thicker plastic there is then bonded onto your traditional uh, carbon-based membrane there. Absolutely fascinating. If anyone knows what this construction technique is called and or if it's still 
use these days, please uh, leave it in the comments or jump on over to the forum to uh, let us know because it really is fascinating. So I wonder if this is like uh, something Casio were experimenting with at the time and whether or not they still use it. I'm not, not entirely sure, but there you go. That is only like a year or two difference between that uh, other Tandy one we saw before and this model, which in the other one before just used a standard PCB and a quad flat pack. And this one, radically different. Absolutely fascinating. So there you have it for this particular Casio FX260 solar calculator. Current draw ranges from, you know, in the order of uh, two microamps up to uh, 15 or 16 microamps. Uh, I expected uh, a bit less than that, actually. I'm a little bit surprised that it draws that much. But go figure. Anyway, little experiment I thought I'd share. Catch you next time.